Hello, students. I'm Mr. Franks and I'm going to be using some animated shorts in the course to try to make it more fun and engaging. Hope you enjoy them. By the way, this cartoon character looks and sounds exactly like me. Kidding. Just kidding. I don't have this much hair in real life. As you can see from reading the first two chapters in Agnew and Brezina's textbook, some things you may have intuitively thought were true about juvenile delinquency may not be true. For instance you may have been surprised to learn that the concept of childhood, as we know it today is a relatively new concept. In fact, the way we view and behave towards young people who commit crimes today, is much different from the way society viewed and treated young people who broke the law for much of history in the Western world. One thing I like about this text is that it reminds us not only of the newness of the concept of childhood, it also reminds us of how young we are as a country. When you're reading chapter 1, remember that we became the United States of America in the late 18th century. I'm sure you know the date of our independence from England. So pay close attention to the history of the modern concept of childhood, the reasons adults began to view children quite differently in the past few centuries. It's important as you begin to understand the complex nature of juvenile crime and the different ways we behave towards young people under the age of 18 who have violated criminal laws. There are some key differences in how juveniles who break the law are treated in the juvenile justice system, and how adults are treated in adult criminal court. Can you listen and explain those differences? It's also important that you understand from reading Chapter 2 how hard it is to get any sort of accurate picture of juvenile crime in the United States. We tend to accept the numbers we see in the news as fact, when it is actually impossible to get an absolutely accurate picture of how much crime we have in this country, whether it be adult or juvenile crime. What can you say about the three major ways we try to determine levels of juvenile crime? Could you explain the strengths and weaknesses of each of the three to another student or friend? You will be asked to do so on our first major test. A word of warning you must read our text. I've had more than a few students over the years try to guess at answers to questions like these, and while it is sometimes entertaining, it is always sad in the end because you can't pull these answers out of thin air. There's no replacement for reading, thinking, and writing about what you are learning. I want to make that clear from the very beginning. Some of this material is intuitive, but a great deal of it is not. Keep up with the reading each week. It isn't a lot, but it is all important. So you've gotten your feet wet now. You've read our syllabus and taken a quiz to see how closely you paid attention to the syllabus. That quiz can earn you your first 10 points in the course, and you can take it as many times as you need to in order to earn those 10 points. You're welcome. No really, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You have introduced yourselves on the discussion board for lesson 1, and you have read the first two chapters in our textbook. That's a good beginning. If you're falling behind already, realize it and change gears. Success is fun, failure is not. One thing you need to know about me is that I am very clear about expectations and learning objectives. I want every student to succeed, and I believe in each and every one of you. Just remember that the beginning of a journey is crucial. Start off strong and you'll probably finish strong. Start off slow and try to play catch up and you'll probably create more stress than necessary for yourself and end up singing the blues. Thanks again for taking Sociology 333 Juvenile Delinquency, and I hope you have already learned a thing or two about juvenile delinquency that might surprise you. That's the end of this mini lecture, and the first of many goofy animated shorts. In each lesson you will find links to these animated shorts, as well as links to audio versions with my real voice. And there are also links to type transcripts for each animated short and audio mini lecture. Closed captioning is available for these animated shorts. Just click on the closed caption button as you view the mini lecture in YouTube. I'm giving you choices as to how to enjoy the mini, mini as in small, lectures. The content is the same in each of the three available forms. Hope you haven't injured yourself too severely laughing. Have a great day, and my best to you all.